Hello and welcome to the first practice session of using math inside of 3D. In this video, we will be taking a look how we can use the monkey saddle equation to model this surface using Blender geometry nodes. And we will see that we can actually tweak it so it kind of flaps its wings, so to speak. And we will see how to create this geometry from scratch and, well, what goes into creating such a thing. So let's begin by creating a new general don't save anything and we can see the default cube delete everything and we start with adding a plane and well for now nothing is special here obviously but what we're gonna do now is we add the subdivision modifier that will help us going forward generating more points for our geometry and then I will press on geometry nodes click the new button and nothing is happening because we will need to actually go here and get into the geometry uh, editor but before we do that let's actually go to the geometry nodes tab so i will actually explain how can you start understanding what to do with equations that you might find on wikipedia or anywhere else on the internet or a friend told you a funny equation and you want to implement it using geometry nodes i will disable the subdivision for now and as you can see if you have never used geometry nodes before but maybe you have used for example houdini before you will see that this geometry spreadsheet is kind of like the same thing as we have geometry spreadsheet inside of Houdini. But if you have no idea what's going on here, let's actually press the tab and go inside our geometry and let me select this vertex. And I press G and Z and I start moving it. However, I'm not just moving it here. You will see that it also moves here. You can see the position is of the vertex number zero is negative one, negative one, and zero and indeed we can see that it's negative one in x negative one in y and it sits on the floor so to speak so basically that means that yes the position of this point is negative one negative one zero however if i start moving it for example gx you will see that the x position starts changing if i press the y key you will see on the top left again the position starts changing for the y coordinate and of course if I press the Z key, you will see that the Z starts moving as well. So, our equation says that the position of the Z equals x in the power of 3 minus 3xy squared, which means that we actually can have all the points generated in before, and just by using some math manipulations inside of geometry nodes, we can dictate where the position in the z-axis of the points will be. So let's create some more points for us. Let's make it four, go outside, enable it back. You can see that it subdivided itself, but for now we don't need this because I have already explained what it happens. So I will just join areas and collapse it here. Okay, so now that we have is our group input geometry and group output geometry. How do we actually get each axis of the position? It's uh, called, if we start typing x, y, z, you will see that we have the separate x, y, z. What it does is it takes the position in x, y, z, and it divides it for each axis on its own. And now, obviously, what we have to do is get the position of our points. After we separate, we will have to then combine it back, right? And as you can see, the geometry has only the geometry input. So we have to type position and it's going to set position. And as you can see, we can get the vector into position here, geometry reference this one. And if we right now, if we put it back into our geometry, whoops, if we put it back in our geometry, it will disappear because, well, we don't have any positions. So let's actually bring it back. As you can see right now, nothing, absolutely nothing is happening. All we do is we separate our vector information of position per point. Then we do nothing right here. And then we combine it back, the floats into vector, get it into position, reference the geometry and output the geometry. So basically we already kind of do something, but we really don't. What we're going to do now is start changing the position of the Z axis. For example, Let's start with math and we can add to the z-axis. As you can see, if I, if I start tweaking this, you can see that the position of the z-axis changes. 
but but the x and y axis stays the same. So this is exactly what we're going to do, what we're going to use. All we need to do is to implement the math equation now so that we calculate the z based on the x and y. So the first thing is the x in the power of 3. How do we do that? We start searching for math. Here it is. And we get the power. So the power needs the actual input, which is, in our case, it is position in the x. And the exponent, which in our case, power of 3. So now you will see if I, for example, put this into the z-axis, you will see that, well, something definitely starts happening. All right, so this is the first, very first part of our equation. Next up, we will have to have 3 multiplied by x multiplied by y squared. So let's do it in the sequence as we see it in the actual equation. First, again, I'll select power, press Shift-D to actually make a copy of this, and we say multiply. So we'll multiply x by 3 first. We input x here. Here is value 3 because, well, we made a copy of our power. In our case, it's, it just so happens that it's the same, the same float here. Next, what we're going to do is multiply that by y squared. Again, I'll just shift Z on this power, put the y into the base, and in this case, the exponent is obviously 2, because it's y squared. Finally, we need to multiply the 3x and y squared all together. So we do that. Let's see shift D on this multiply. And we put it here in the first input, and the 3x in the second input. And we finally get the result that we're looking for, which is y squared by 3x multiplied. We will need to subtract this result out of the x in the power of 3. Again, another math. And we press subtract, um, get the x power of 3, subtract our result. And finally, this becomes our z-axis. And as you can see, lo and behold, we have the visualization of our math equation. Now, if you remember, we can actually tweak it. So we can tweak the, this value to make the direction of the, so to speak, wings of the saddle go one way or another way, or just tweak the curvature of the change. If you want to have the same wireframe result as we had before, all we're going to do, wireframe, and here we go. Maybe add emission, kind of like five or something like this. Make it rendered, and there you go. We can actually go back to our modifiers, increase the subdivision, decrease the thickness a little bit, so it kind of looks a little bit more like all those uh, popular science books that you see, and there you go. So what we have is geometry nodes modifying our input plane by the monkey saddle equation and it gives us this result that you can see and you can check it looks the same as you would see it on the internet in wikipedia or somewhere else the only difference might be is if we change the multiplication of some of our part of the equation so that we can tweak the look of it so there you go this is how you use equations inside of blender geometry nodes Hopefully this was fun and interesting for you. If it is your, you know, first time inside of Blended Geometry Nodes, well, there you go. You started with math, so that's cool. And I just want to reiterate, this was just an example to show you that the basis and fundamentals of using math inside of any other 3D application is practically the same as you would see going forward in this series of videos. But um, I didn't want to make the users of Blender to feel left out. So this is why we started here. So going forward, I think we will be mostly using Houdini and Unreal Engine, and maybe sometimes if we're talking about applying things for rendering, maybe also use Cycles as well. But that is for another videos. And for now, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and had fun. If you wanna learn more, just hit the subscribe button. Don't hesitate to leave comments and suggestions below. I try to read all the comments. I hope you have a nice day. See you later and bye-bye.